intensive transport or a domestic environment, domestic economics, were not very interested in these rules from Brussels. They were very happy with their own rules. And I had to go there and say, look, this is the new directive on harmonization of the pressure of tires of automobiles beyond 2,000 uh, square centimeters. And this is important. That is all these things made my job hard, but gradually realized that if we open up this information and we publish it, then NGOs, business, parliamentarians, media, take this information. And we saw this surging of interest groups saying the Ministry of Transport is the worst ministry with regard to implementation of rules from Brussels. Parliamentarians read that. Asked the Ministry of Trans Minister of Transport to explain in Parliament why are you the worst? Don't you think that it's bad for our competition? Don't you think that we have problems if you are not implementing these rules from Brussels? By the way, did, didn't you make these, work, these, these rules in Brussels yourself? So why are you not implementing them? And these lists became interesting because within three months, this Minister of Transport might have done this job and then another minister would be the worst. Minister of the Environment, the Minister of Economics. So this information became relevant for the media, for NGOs, for business, but also to improve the work of the government itself. And Parliament had the pleasure of having complete information to question the government how they were doing. And in the end, I think a win-win-win situation emerged. When we were doing better, the media had the information, NGOs had uh, ways to encourage government to do things, and business saw that gradually the competition for them in Europe became uh, more manageable. But this sort of things, there was no policy behind it. These days, we see that the Romanian government is encouraging it, and we also, in our countries, we see the merits, we try to unite, we try to exchange good practices. And these things are encouraged by you, by the media, by uh, public groups, and you make good use of it. An interesting one we found in the justice sector here in Romania is an NGO called, with a funny name, a funky citizen, uh, working together with the Ministry of Justice and with the GSMA, the Council of Magistrates, to find information about which court in which country of the country is doing what. How efficient are they? How fast are they? What are the results they're bringing about? And this information helps, of course, citizens to know a bit more about how justice is serving them, but it also gives reflection to the GSMA itself and to the Ministry of Justice how things are going, how the efficiency of the services is, and perhaps it might help them also to redistribute cases to courts that are uh, in, in lack of, uh, of work or are not so efficient. In extractive industry, uh, Romania has a huge amount of, of resources, forest, uh, uh, oil, gas, agriculture. If this information is available, it is useful also for business. It is useful uh, for government to know what is telling you. Romania can turn stories into uh, conscious people knowing what the value is and the potential of the country. Museum can use information, open up all the collections they have, which will help others to study and write stories about it, which will interest people about what the pressures are that the country has. The Prime Minister mentioned the importance of 